Welcome back. In this video, we want to check out how we can get an IP address from a certain website as well as some additional information about it. So, since we can't really do this with our OWASP because this is a virtual machine that's hosting a website inside of our local network, so it doesn't really have a domain name or should I say a link, we already have its IP address right here. So, we're just going to take a look at how we can get an IP address from some random website online. To do that, let's first open up our terminal. And there are a couple commands that you will use a lot. First command, which we already performed in a previous lecture, is called ping. Now, ping command allows us to determine whether a host is online or offline. For example, if I type ping and then the IP address of my OWASP virtual machine and press enter, it will continue pinging the virtual machine, which we can determine that this machine is up and running. Now to stop this, let's press control C. And besides using ping and then the IP address, we can also use ping with a website name. For example, we can type ping google.com and it will perform the same thing. And as we can see, we're also getting the response from google.com and in the brackets, we're also getting an IP address. So with this command, we did manage to get an IP address of google.com. Now, one thing to take in is that this command or the ping command doesn't necessarily always tell us the truth. Some websites might block ping probes and we might not be able to ping them. However, they could still be online. And we're going to take a look at that later on, but just keep it in mind for now that if the pinging doesn't work, it doesn't necessarily mean that the website is offline. Okay. Now, another command that you can use to determine the IP address of a website is called host. If you type host, and let's right now use, for example, Tesla. So host tesla.com. It will tell us tesla.com has an address of 199, 66, 11, and then 62. It also gives us some additional information such as tesla.com mail is handled by this. Okay, so this is additional information, but we were mostly interested in this. Don't worry if you get a different IP address for these bigger websites, it's normal because they're not hosted only on one IP address. And the third way that we can determine is with the help of a command called nslookup. So if I type nslookup.com, it will give me a response of my server or my DNS server, or in this case, my router, which is hosted at the IP address of 192.168.1.1. And the answer to our question will be down here. The name that we searched is tesla.com and we got an IP address of 199, 66, 11, and then 62, which is the same IP address as we got right here. But besides getting an IP address, we can also extract some additional information that is publicly available. We can do that by using a tool called Whois. Now, Whois tool is used for gathering information about details of website registration that the owner of website provides. This usually provides us with some additional contacts such as emails, phone numbers, and also some physical addresses. Let's give it a try. So let's type who is tesla.com. Then we get a bunch of reply right here. We can already see that we're getting some phone numbers right here. If we scroll a little bit up, we're getting name servers. We're getting some postal code, street, city, basically the physical address, including some phone numbers as well. We get information about admin. So we can see the admin name, the organization, street, city, and phone number. Some other information as well. Domain status. If we go up. Okay, so here is even more information. We get name servers right here. I believe these are the same as the ones that we passed below. We get more phone numbers, some email address as well. So we do get some information right here about the website. Usually these large outputs will be given for larger websites. For example, if you were to try who is command on some not that known website, it probably wouldn't give as much information as we got right here. As always, besides of using command line tools, oops, what happened here? Let's clear the terminal. And 
Besides using the command line tools that we will always use, you can also take a look at some website that will also give you information about a different website. That is also called passive information gathering. Why passive? Once we pinged our website and we used host and NSLOOKUP and whois from our command line, we performed active information gathering because we pretty much interacted with the website the whole time. But once you do the same thing through a different website, it's called passive information gathering because our target website won't be able to see who searched that information for them because we never interacted with that website. We went through a third party website that did all of that for us. So for example, we can type websites IP and find some website that will determine the IP of our target. Let's visit this first one, which is at link site24x7.com. And it pretty much does what it says, it finds an IP address. So if we were to type, for example, www.google.com, find IP, it would give us the IP address of www.google.com. And we can also get some other information if we go to DNS analysis right here. So we do get something right here. Here are the name servers. We got four of them as we should get. We also get reverse lookup. So we can also perform DNS analysis right here and gather information from this third party website as well. Okay, awesome. But these are all basic things. So we're pretty much just getting the IP address of the website. For now on, we also perform some Google dorking in order to find some useful information that we might need. We did perform who is command that gave us some additional information such as phone numbers, email addresses, and physical location. But these are all basic stuff. We want to get to the technical side of a website. And in the next lecture, we're going to check out a tool called WhatWeb. That is the tool that you will also use a lot and it's pretty useful in discovering technologies that are behind the website. Nonetheless, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture.